Okay, this sounds like a rhetorical question, but thinking about it, just a moment. If you could triple the number of guests coming to your church, would you do it? Of course you would. Now, if you don't, if you have zero, three times zero is still zero, but you get the point. If you could have a significantly increased number of guests coming to your church, would you do it? I know you would. We're going to talk about that, and it's only going to take a few minutes to do so. Welcome to the Church Answers Podcast. My name is Tom Rayner, and we are always sponsored by Belay. And just understand what Belay does. They take the responsibility of some of the things that you don't need to be doing, and they do them for you. Whether it's hiring someone to be an assistant or a bookkeeper or a webmaster, the list goes on and on. They're the type of organization that takes all of that upon themselves. They do the hiring. An unlikely event that somebody needs to let go, they'll take care of that. You have a virtual worker right by your side. We've used them forever at Church Answers, even before they were named Belay and when they worked under another name. Uh, they've got a they've got a resource for you. It's called 25 Tasks a Pastor Can Delegate to an Assistant. Download that. You can see it at the show notes. You're able to pick that up right now, or you can just, well, you just go to the show notes. It's uh, belaysolutions.com slash Tom Rayner, and you can find that solution, and you can find that resource there. Let's get to the question. If you could triple the number of guests in your church each week, would you do it? Well, the answer is yes, of course you would. Now, here is the reality, folks. Most churches are not doing two key things, especially one of these, but most churches are not doing two key things in order to see more guests come to the church. All right, let's talk about that first aspect. What is the first thing they are not doing? They are not preparing the fields. They are not preparing the fields. You've heard of, of seeding the fields. You've heard of harvesting the fields. I'm talking about just simply preparing the fields, keep, keeping it to that metaphor. What is preparing the fields from the point of view of a church? Well, here's a simple reality. You need to let the community know that the church is there and it's there for the community. Just as simple as that. And you might think, well, our building is here and our signs are here. Well, how many signs do you remember when you go down a particular town or street or whatever the case may be? That's not going to get it. You need some other way to prepare the fields. Now, what, what, what are some examples? One example is this. You can send a mailer, like a postcard, to every resident, new resident, who moves into whatever the specified area that they move into. Uh, we at Church Answers have a partnership with Outreach where we prov we give you that resource. You just you determine what your area is and, and uh, you determine which kind of postcard you want to send to new residents. And right away, you are making people aware that your church exists in the community. Now, for, for certain, this is only new residents, but over time, those new residents who were first contacted by you will become longer term residents. And in time, you will get a significant portion of the community where you've made a contact. And it's a very inexpensive form of, of just seeding, the, not seeding the fields, but preparing the fields so that somebody knows you're there. People cannot come to your church unless they know you are there. And they know you are there for them as well. So one of the things that you can do is just do a new mover ministry. We'll put in uh, the show notes the uh, uh, information from outreach so that we can we can uh, share that with you. Uh, uh, another one is uh, just a door hanger. Just people going out from your church into the community and putting door hangers. Just as simple as that. Hey, uh, this is our church, or can we pray for you, or something like that. Not knocking on doors, not doing anything that is that is uh, overwhelming to your members, but just going down different streets and putting door hangers. That's another way to prepare the field. A third way to prepare the field is to have a massive type of emphasis on inviting people. We have one at Church Answers called Invite Your One. We'll put that in the show notes as well. And it tr it helps your church to know how you can get people in through invitation. Now, here's the reality of it. Eight out of 10 people will come to your church if you invite them 
and you walk into the church building with them. I'll say that again. Eight out of 10 will come to your church if you invite them and you walk into the church building with them. The number goes up even higher if you invite them to a meal after the service. Now, those are three ways. And what you are doing in those three ways is you're making the church known to the community and letting the community know that you want to serve them. So you are preparing the fields. That's one of the reasons most churches don't get guests because they don't have a consistent way to prepare the, the fields. They may do something periodically, but they're not doing that on an ongoing way. So number one, if you want to increase your guests, maybe triple the number of guests, prepare the fields. And we have just given you some examples right there. Number two, remove blockages. Remove blockages. Now, the best example of a blockage is a bad website. The first place that someone's going to go, if they're thinking about visiting your church, is your website. And if it's not addressing the guest, if it doesn't have clearly the street address for, for GPS systems, if it does not have the time of services, if it's an ugly looking site, if it does not communicate, these days, it is so inexpensive and so easy to build a website. So the big, the big hang up with, with the, the website is it becomes a blockage. And what's going to happen is people are going to go just walk away from your website, probably not even look at another church once they've done that. And you have not prepared the fields. Now, let's sum this up real quickly. The primary reason that people are not coming to your church in greater numbers is you're not preparing the fields. Preparing the fields is simply making your church known to the community. We've talked about new mailer ministries. We talked about door hangers. Uh, we've talked about a ministry called Invite Your One. And then the second thing you have to do is remove blockages. We gave the clear example that the website can be the greatest blockage. A website is not going to increase dramatically the number of people coming to your church but it is not, it, it will not have to be a hindrance if the information is accurate and the website is friendly to guests. Triple the number of your guests coming to your church. Number one, let the people in the community know the church is here and that you want them to know that the church is there to serve them. Number two, remove any blockages such as a website. It's as simple as that and you can get started on that right away. Once again, we thank Belay always for being our sponsor on these very short podcasts where we just we try to give you one simple point or two simple points and then move on. And uh, we hope you're enjoying them. We release three at a time so you can listen to all three of them in this particular session. Uh, how to triple the number of guests in your church. We'll do one on why vacations are such a problem for many pastors. And then we'll follow that up with four ways a pastor can make the vacation more helpful in that particular ministry. As always, belay thank you, and don't forget to download 25 tasks a pastor can delegate to an assistant. Listen to this podcast along with the other two that we have just released, and we'll see you and we'll hear from you in the next podcast. See you later. Hey folks, this is a PS to our podcast. We got some exciting stuff that we want to offer you absolutely for free. Sam, when you think about predictive factors in, in, in a church's growth, if you take out demographics, what are some things that come to mind? Just, just two, I mean, don't give me a list of 10, just, just two or three things that come to mind on predictive growth of a church. Well, evangelism and whether okay. the church is doing it or not. Bingo. And then I, and then, and then I will add, is it an ongoing evangelism emphasis? Double bingo, well. double and maybe something about leadership and their commitment to that. So all of the above. Evangelistic churches have evangelistic pastors. Is it, the staff, is the lead pastor doing the work themselves? We have a free download for you, and it's actually a sheet that you can self-score. You answer 20 questions anywhere from uh, strongly disagree to strongly agree. And we come back and we predict what your growth rate is going to be for the next year in worship attendance. It's not a perfect tool, but it's a good tool. There's a link to that for the, for the attendance predictor. Look in the show notes. You'll absolutely love it. That's cool. We'll see you soon.